19th century Utica banker and philosopher Alexander Johnson coined the phrase, from tiny acorns do mighty oaks grow, an apt metaphor for Utica's Olmsted experience that began small, but evolved as no one could have foreseen. Thomas R. Proctor came to Utica in 1869 to assume ownership of Utica's oldest lodging, the famous Baggs Hotel. The establishment owned a farm to raise vegetables for its guests and included a small wooded ravine, the Silver Spring Glen. When Uticans began to ask permission to picnic in the Glen, Proctor gladly agreed and even began advertising the Glen as open to all visitors. The Proctor family's first step toward park building. A quarter century later in 1897, Proctor's wife, Mariah, and her sister, Rachel, created a public park on James Street, named in honor of their father, James Watson Williams. By donating this seven acre park to the people of Utica, the amount of public parkland doubled to an astounding 14 acres. Two years later, Proctor transformed his Bags Hotel farm, including the Silver Spring Glen, into what he called a children's park. Soon to become popularly known as Thomas Proctor's Park, the name stuck and Utica's public parkland swelled to 75 acres. Proctor began giving speeches to civic groups, notably the Chamber of Commerce, urging Utica city government to build parks at public expense. He contended that it was unhealthy for average working people who could not afford to go to places like the Adirondacks to live in a city that gave them no access to spaces in which to enjoy nature, relax, and play. His exhortations fell largely on deaf ears. So he and his wife decided to take matters into their own hands, building and donating two more parks, Addison Miller and Horatio Seymour, each of them 15 acres. Once bitten by the park building bug, the Proctors began buying up farmland on Utica's southern boundaries, 385 acres in all. The Proctors soon found that transforming so much farmland into a park was a challenge. He needed expert help. As the result of a mutual friend's introduction of Proctor to Frederick Law Olmsted Jr. in 1906, Proctor's 385 acres of farmland was transformed into Roscoe Conkling Park, named for a U.S. Senator from Utica. And in 1909, this large park and the Thomas R. Proctor Park were donated by the Proctors to the people of Utica. Originally organized around focal points, the park included small buildings and seating areas mostly named for trees, the elms, the hemlocks, the maples. The highest elevation, called the Plateau, is now noted for the statue that was placed there later, known as the Eagle. The South Woods, better known as the home to the switchbacks, featured zigzagging roads beneath a magnificent canopy of trees. Although some of this has disappeared, much remains. Conkling Park is very similar to Delaware Park in Buffalo, which was designed by Olmsted's father. Both parks having miles of trails, tennis courts, a zoo, and a golf course. And although Conkling Park lacks Delaware Park's beautiful pond, it does offer another sort of Olmsteadian feature, lacking in its Buffalo counterpart. Viewing areas of magnificent vistas of the upper Mohawk Valley. 
Jürgens were delighted by the Proctor family's generosity. But a challenge remained. There was no easy way to travel between the parks. Proctor had for many years advocated not just for these parks, but for a broad, tree-lined, park-like boulevard as well. That dream would become reality, owing not only to Proctor's advocacy, but to Olmsted's as well. <laughs>